using census data using examples? Yeah. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Uh, so uh, today I'm going to uh, present uh, our work for uh, automating data following tasks using examples. Uh, my name is Xin Yu Wong, and I'm a PhD student from uh, the University of Texas Austin, and this is a joint work with uh, uh, Sumi Guani and Rishabh Singh from Microsoft Research. Uh, nowadays we have uh, lots of data, and uh, people typically want to just focus on a subset of the data in order to uh, draw useful conclusions and get insights. So this can be done by applying a filter expression on the uh, original set of data to get this uh, subset. So existing, uh, existing tools already support this feature, actually. Uh, so for example, Excel provides a simple basic filter functionality where the user could uh, choose a constant uh, together with the predicates uh, to filter data in the columns. Uh, however, for more uh, complicated tasks, uh, this is actually uh, not expressive enough. So uh, to, to solve this uh, more uh, non-trivial tasks, uh, Excel provides another few, uh, more advanced uh, folder functionality where the user uh, could actually write uh, regular expressions. So this is very powerful, however, uh, the uh, problem here is uh, for these uh, computer end users, they don't know how to program, and writing a, a proper regular expression uh, to perform this further task is actually uh, not easy for them. So we have... Um, uh, studied uh, a lot of uh, health forums because uh, these users, for, to, to, in order to perform these non-trivial tasks, these users uh, have to uh, go to these online health forums to ask for help from uh, domain experts. So it turns out that uh, the, the workflow of this process is uh, the following. The user will give examples to the experts, and the experts will look at the ex examples and uh, come up with a, a fairly good expression or like a kind of filter expression to, uh, to do the task, and then uh, give this uh, a program, a little program to the users. The user will apply this uh, thing on the on, on the data set and uh, see how it works. If it doesn't work, they will give more examples and this process continues. So this process is actually very expensive. It lasts for typically for uh, minutes, hours, even days. So in this work, we uh, have uh, replaced uh, the human expert in the loop by our system called FIDEX that could learn these uh, fuller expressions automatically from examples. So this could dramat dramatically reduce these, uh, the time of this process from hours, uh, days, to uh, seconds, actually. All right. So more uh, formally, the problem we're tackling uh, in this paper is the following. So given a set of strains, including both positive strains and negative strains, we want to get a filter expression that could um, get us just the, uh, the, the, the subset of the strains that in in include only the uh, positive strains. So we uh, have solved this problem by applying the uh, program uh, by example um, a technique uh, to learn this uh, further expression from examples, including both positive and negative examples. So before, uh, before uh, moving to the uh, uh, technical dis uh, dis discussion of our technique, I would like to uh, present you uh, some uh, examples to illustrate how our system works. So in this example, the user wants to uh, filter for a uh, profit transaction with value greater than or equal to 1,000. So in this case, uh, say the user has this um, small column with, uh, with this uh, strings, uh, and the user actually wants to uh, select uh, only three, in, uh, three uh, string instances out of this column. So to, to do this, the user could simply interact with our system by giving examples. Say the first example the user gives is the first string. So in this case, it's a positive example because the user wants to um, uh, keep this string in the output. So our system could take this example and lear it learns a program that looks for strings starting with a word. So in this case, this program is actually not, not correct because it matches everything uh, in the column. So again, the user could simply pick uh, another example. In this case, the second string, which is actually a negative example because the user doesn't want to um, have this in the, in, in the output. So again, our system uh, takes this one more example and learns a program that could actually uh, be consistent with uh, all the previous examples, and this is the, fir uh, the, the first two examples. Again, this program is not um, completely correct because uh, there is one more uh, string that is, uh, it matches but actually shouldn't match. So the user could pick this uh, example and give it to the uh, system, and this time the system learns the correct program, which looks for string that start with a constant p followed by a word of space and four digits. Okay, so as you, oh, sorry, sorry. So as you can see in this example, 
uh, we, uh, the, the, our system could actually uh, take uh, both positive and negative examples and learns, uh, learn a program that is uh, consistent with all the, all the examples. So now, now I'm going to show you uh, one more example uh, to demonstrate the, 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 the diversity of the programs that our system could learn. So in this case, the user wants to uh, filter for uh, a new item price of a product. So this is just a small example. The user wants to pick this uh, two string items of, of this column strings. So in this case, by just giving examples, our system learns a, a different program that uh, looks for uh, uh, strings uh, that contain this pattern, this new parenthesis followed by a number. So in this case, uh, note that we are actually using a different uh, predicate here, essentially, a contains, uh, rather than the, the, the start with semantic in the previous example. All right. So, um, okay, let's move to the uh, solution. So to solve this problem, we have um, designed a novel DSO for this uh, specific problem, uh, data filtering. And also we uh, proposed a version-based algebra-based uh, synthesis algorithm that could learn programs uh, in this DSO. So in particular, our algorithm could handle both uh, positive and negative examples, uh, especially negative examples, by using this uh, DAG-based uh, data structure. And finally, we have uh, evaluated our tool uh, on 460 benchmarks, and it turns out that our two can, can be used in uh, practice. All right, so let's uh, first uh, look at the uh, language part. So here is our uh, DSO. So our DSO, uh, the top level construct of our DSO is a further expression that takes uh, two arguments, a bracket P and a set of strings L. So the further expression keeps only the strings in L that are matched by P. So we have four kinds of predicates in our language. Um, starts with n with matches contains. So each predicate takes a string variable v and a destructive expression r. So a predicate is valued to true if the string v is matched by this uh, expression r. So this destructive expression r is effectively a disjunction of token sequences, where each token sequence is simply a sequence of tokens chosen from a predefined token set. In our system, we have a uh, token set with more than 100, more than 100 tokens, including both uh, general tokens, cons uh, constant tokens. So essentially, the language we, hear, uh, we, we have here is a restrict, restricted and structured form of regular expression language. So in particular, we have this structure that only allows the predicate to be outside the disjunction. So effectively, this is limiting the language to only allow um, uh, disjunction of predicates of the same, uh, the, the, the same kind. So it doesn't allow, for example, any arbitrary combination of these um, uh, predicates. So it, you can't have this disjunction of start with and end with in the, in the same uh, expression. So we find this to be uh, very useful to, uh, to, in order to have this uh, more efficient uh, learning algorithm. And this uh, doesn't hurt the, uh, the um, uh, expressiveness in uh, practice. All right. So now, um, uh, to learn programs in this uh, DSO, so essentially we need to learn two things. So first, we need to learn the type of predicate to be used in the filter expression. Second, we need to learn the um, disjunction ex expression, basically the, the disjunction of these token sequences. So but bef before I present you the, the, the more details of our, our learning algorithm, let's uh, just look at some examples. Uh, of the programs to solve the, 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 the two examples I mentioned at the beginning. So for the first example, recall that we want to, um, to, to have this uh, uh, program that looks for strings starting with uh, this pattern. So in this case, we simply pick the start with uh, predicate in our language using this uh, token sequence, uh, this constant, constant token P followed by a word, a white space, and four digits. The second example is uh, different. It's using this contains with uh, c contains a predicate predicate with a, a, a different uh, token sequence that looks for uh, a new uh, white space followed by a parenthesis and a number. All right. So now let's um, turn our attention to the, the, the synthesis algorithm. So to uh, present you the core idea of our algorithm, so I will be focused on first a simplified DSL where we don't have disjunctions. So there is no disjunction at all. So on, on, only the token sequences are uh, there. And second, I'm assuming we are learning a program for only one type, type of predicate. So the learning task here is essentially just to learn this token sequence to be used in the given predicate. 
So I'm assuming the predicate is given. All right, so this is the interface of our algorithm. So our algorithm takes a set of examples, including both positive and negative examples, and it learns a program E that uses the given predicate, and this E is consistent with all the examples. So here, by consistent, I mean the program, this, this expression, will match the, all the positive examples, but not the negative examples. So internally, the program constructs one data structure to one example. So here, the data structure represents all the token sequences that match the example. Then it performs um, some manip manipulation of these uh, data structures. So in this case, in particular, it first applies this so-called subtraction operator on the first two data structures, so D1, D2, to get this new data structure, D1, 2, such that this new data structure represents all the token sequences that are represented by the first data structure, but not the second. So here we're essentially computed different, uh, computing the difference of the two, uh, two uh, sets of token sequences represented by two data structures. So we, we want to compute this subtraction uh, because uh, the second example is a negative example. It's something we don't want to match. All right. Then the algorithm applies this intersection operation on the two uh, data structures, D1, 2, and D3, to get this new thing, this D1, 2, 3. So this uh, data structure represents the common token sequences in both data structures. So the, in this case, we want to have this uh, intersection because the third example is a pause example, which is something we, we do want to match. So finally, our algorithm performs the ranking over the, uh, over, over the uh, token sequences represented by the uh, data structure and selects the best token sequence out of all the token sequence and returns that to the user. All right. So here, uh, essentially, we need to support four operations uh, in the algorithm. So a construction algorithm that converts an example to a data structure that represents all the token sequences that could match that example. Then we need to support two operators, the intersection and subtraction operator, to do, uh, to, to do this manipulation over these disruptors. And finally, we need to have this ranking algorithm that could pick the uh, best uh, token sequence out of a set of token sequences. All right, so now in the following, I'm going to uh, explain uh, each operation one by one. So first, let's look at the destruction. So the destruction here that is used in our algorithm is essentially a DAG-based uh, destruction that represents a set of tokens, uh, token sequences. So in particular, it's represented by a five tuple, the uh, set of nodes, edges, and labels, and a starting nodes and ending nodes. So here, the starting nodes and ending nodes are just two subsets of the set of nodes. Okay, so a token sequence that is represented in the data structure, the DAG, is a path from any starting node to any ending node in the DAG. So in particular, let's look at one example. In this case, we have a DAG with uh, five nodes. Zero is the starting node, four is the, the ending node. So we have, in this case, this token sequence word followed by a number in this DAG because there is a path from zero to four with two edges, and the, the word and number are the uh, tokens on these two edges uh, along the path. All right, you, you should get an idea how to uh, how, uh, how many uh, token sequences there are representing this DAG. Essentially, uh, actually, there are exponential number of these uh, token sequences that are represented here, but we are using only a polynomial uh, uh, space. So this is a very efficient data structure. OK, so to construct this uh, DAGs, uh, we need to perform two steps. In the first step, we construct the nodes, edges, and labels uh, in the DAG. So one example, uh, consider the string AB12. And also, we have a very small token set uh, with only four tokens. So we will first construct the nodes in the DAG. So here, one node in the DAG basically cor corresponds to one position in the input string, uh, the, the, the position uh, between two uh, adjacent uh, characters. So then we will uh, construct uh, the edges together with la labels. So here we have an edge uh, with label char from 0 to 1 because the substring 0, 1 uh, that represents the, 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 the character A in the input string is only matched by this uh, char token in the token set, uh, token set. So we do this for all the nodes, basically. Then the second step is assigns this uh, starting and ending nodes in the DAG. So depending upon the different predicate that is used in the, uh, the, the, the algorithm, 
we have uh, different assignments. Uh, so for example, for start with, because it's uh, essentially looking for uh, token sequences that match any prefix of the string. So the first, only the first position will be the starting node, whereas any other nodes will be the any nodes. So uh, similarly for ends with, since it's capturing this uh, suffix uh, thing, so the uh, the uh, the last position will be the 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 the, the uh, any node, whereas any other nodes will be the starting node. Similarly, for uh, matches uh, and uh, contains, we have this assignment uh, according to their semantics. Okay, so now let's move to the uh, two operators. So we have two operators. The first one is intersection. So intersection is uh, basically just a standard Cartesian product of two graphs. So I'm going to skip the discussion here, but it's very similar to uh, intersecting two finite state machines. So the second, uh, instead I'll fo focus on the second uh, operator, the subtraction operator. So here we have, um, so recall that the subtraction, uh, the subtraction operator essentially computes the uh, difference of the two sets of token sequences represented by the two data uh, structures. So here the idea is we want to remove uh, the token sequences represented by a path p prime, any path p prime in d prime, from those token sequences represented by any path p in d. So to do this, we perform two steps uh, from high level. So first, we perform this so-called isolation step. We isolate the new path from the original path p, so that the new path represents the intersection of these two uh, sets. And also, we update the, the old path to only represent this difference. So here, the difference is something we want to compute, and we want to delete uh, this intersection. So we perform this deletion step so that we, we only uh, represent the, the difference of these two sets. So in particular, in the implementation, it always keeps track of two nodes in the two decks, dd prime. So to perform the isolation, it just copies the target node uh, to a new node together with the edges and also updates the labels of, uh, accordingly. Then it performs the deletion by just making this uh, target node from an ending node to a uh, non-ending node, if, if it was a, a, an ending node. Then the algorithm moves to these two uh, targets nodes and apply this procedure recursively. Right? So basically you are removing the uh, things on this edge, this segment, recursively. So, uh, and finally, when, you term, uh, when it terminates, it, it removes everything. All right, so the last piece is uh, the ranking algorithm. So uh, the uh, ranking algorithm that is used in the, 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 the synthesis algorithm is uh, actually a greedy algorithm that looks for a, a path in the DAG. So recall that the path in the DAG represents a token sequence. So in particular, it favors uh, uh, this uh, shorter path uh, with more general tokens because these uh, simpler programs, shorter expressions, uh, that, use, uh, that, that use more general tokens uh, are ten, uh, tend to be uh, the, the correct program the user actually wants to perform the task. So this is just heuristics. Okay, so now we have uh, finished the uh, algorithm, the learning algorithm for the simplified DSL. So I'm gonna move to the, uh, extend, and, uh, to, to, to extend this to the complete DSL. DSL. Recall that there are two uh, things we have uh, simplified. One is we're assuming there is no disjunction. So to learn the uh, disjunctive expressions, we simply, uh, this is based on the the, uh, the, the simplified algorithm. So uh, you, you can think of the simplified algorithm as uh, just looking for a disjunction with only one disjunct. So I'm going to start there and then grows this number of disjuncts in the disjunction when I find it's necessary. So I'm going to skip, uh, skip the details, but you can look at the paper. So there is uh, the second uh, uh, assumption there. So we're learning only for uh, one given predicate. So here to learn with multiple predicates, we just uh, impose an order and we learn this practice in this order. The first uh, practice that, that we can learn successfully will be the, the one we use uh, in the, the, the final program. All right, so now let's move to uh, the evaluation. So we have um, uh, implement our two, uh, as well as uh, two other baselines. Oh, of course, we have, we have more baselines in the paper, but here I'm gonna just present two. So one is the uh, conditional learning procedure in flash, flash extract, which uh, learns a program that is used for string matching. So we, we use this one uh, as the first uh, baseline. The second is actually a, a variant of our system. So this is, uh, this is uh, 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 using uh, programs without disjunction. So this is basically corresponds to the simplified algorithm, but, but uh, learns uh, multiple predicates. Okay, so we evaluate this, um, uh, these um, uh, uh, implementations over 
460 benchmarks, and it turns out that's our um, uh, FIDAX system the, for the uh, complete uh, language could learn the most uh, number of benchmarks, uh, could solve most number of benchmarks. And in, in particular, it's very fast. It learns, uh, it learns a program, it solves a benchmark in, in almost uh, real time, just 0 0.2 seconds on average. So one reason that uh, this uh, 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 system is so fast is that the, uh, the, the, the complexity of the operators, uh, the intersection uh, subtraction operators, are very fast in, in practice. So we have measured the size of the DAC before and after uh, the application of the operator. And we find this basically linear uh, growth uh, in, the, in, in the size of the DAC. So there is no blow up in the size of the DAC. So finally, to demonstrate the usability of our tool, we also uh, measure uh, the number of examples used f to solve uh, each benchmark. So on, on average, uh, our tool only requires 2.2 uh, positive examples and 2.7 neg neg examples. So just very few examples. All right, so to sum up, uh, in this paper, we have proposed a novel uh, DSL for uh, performing this data filtering tasks. And we have developed uh, a version-based algebra-based uh, synthesis algorithm that in particular could handle NEC examples using a uh, DAC-based data structure. And we have performed uh, an evaluation over 460 benchmarks. And our system could be uh, used to, uh, uh, in real world. Thanks. Actually, I'm not aware of the uh, the tool, but uh, but we uh, we 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 did.